Hello listeners, this is Kat and welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This will be the continuation of Little Acts of Kindness. This will be part 41, chapter 41, entitled The First Day of Training. Izuku swallowed as he looked at the decrepit building. Was this really where Gran Torino lived? He had met the man once a few weeks ago when All Might brought him over, and even though Izuku had been mute at the time, the older hero had still helped him figure out that he needed to send his power throughout his entire body. Hesitantly, he knocked on the door. There was no answer. Focusing, he carefully called out. H hello No response. Unsure if this was the right location, he tested the door and found it unlocked. Deciding to take a look around, he pushed the door open. Slowly, with a loud creak, the door opened, revealing what looked to be a messy, broken-down room. Broken furniture lay scattered about, pictures hanging crooked on the wall and cobwebs covering the corners. A cackling laughter had Izuku tense and drop his hero case, getting into a defensive stance. A split second later, he was on the ground, clutching his stomach. Get up, boy! Defend yourself! Gran Torino's voice echoed from around him, Izuku now hearing thuds as the hero banged around the room, bouncing off walls, ceiling, and the floor. Stumbling to his feet, he retook his defensive stance, trying to find where Gran Torino was, but the man was just a yellow blur. A few seconds later, and he was sent flying forward into the center of the room as he was kicked in his back. Show me how well you can control one for all. Izuku frowned once more getting up, calling on one for all. He grabbed the smallest amount he could and distributed it throughout his body. Immediately, the blur that was Gran Torino became more easy to spot. Still fast, but Izuku could see the man during the travel, instead of just a blur. Which was interesting. It seemed that One for All helped to improve either the rate he saw things or the rate of which his brain processed things, which shouldn't be possible if this was just a stockpile quirk of power, right? He had no more time to think and ponder it over, though, as there was a shift and Izuku threw himself to the left, barely getting out of the way of Gran Torino's attack. Good, the man said, coming to a stop in front of Izuku, staring up at him with clear brown eyes. Put on your costume. W what? It's clear that All Might is unable to teach you how to wield your quirk. He can't watch over you properly, so that means I gotta do it. So put on your costume and let the training begin. Izuku nodded and grabbed his case, the older hero leading him to a room in order to get changed and to put his stuff in. Getting undressed, his eyes once more caught sight of the scar that adorned his chest, and he grimaced, looking away as he was reminded of how close to death he had come. He changed into his costume, the plain green jumpsuit with a mouth guard, then his supply belt, which had a holster he slipped his improved gun into. His support weapon now included a holster, and right now it was loaded with knockout bullets. Once he was dressed, he exited and found Gran Torino in the kitchen area. Uh, okay, I'm ready, but... Good, Gran Torino shouted, immediately launching himself at Izuku. Izuku yelped, wincing as he saw things vibrate and shift around him, but that did get the fast-moving hero to stop. What was that? Your original quirk? Kinda, Izuku stated, focusing on controlling his voice. Explain. M my quirk is a bonding quirk. I copy quirks of those I bond with. The old man looked at him, cane tapping on the floor for a moment before he asked. What all have you copied? Do you always stutter or is your voice still injured? Izuku looked down, cheeks heating up as the hero pointed out his stuttering. Uh, always stutter and uh, erasure and the voice. Interesting. All right, you're not allowed to use either of those quirks while training with me this week, understand? Izuku nodded. Y yes sir All right, let's get back to training. One for all only. With that, Tahiro took off again, jumping around the room like a maniac. Izuku once again fired up one for all, noticing in the mirror the lightning that seemed to crackle around his skin. Pay attention, the older hero snapped out, a kick landing against the back of his leg, knocking him onto his knees. Izuku quickly got up in the fight, well, more like beating was back in business. For the next hour, he was forced to dodge and figure out just where Gran Torino would be attacking. He wasn't given a break from the steady streams of attacks, wasn't given time to think and analyze what was going on. All his quick predictions were proven wrong, as Gran Torino used those opportunities to pin him down or throw him somewhere in the room. Even when he did figure out where the teacher was attacking from, his defense was broken by the surprisingly strong hero. Then the hero came to a stop, staring at him. That's enough of this for now. You've grasped the original concept well enough. W what? Uh, original concept? Gran Torino nodded, picking up his cane and whacking Izuku on the knee, green lightning flickering at the weapon briefly. Yes, B. 
being able to use it like a basic quirk, an extension of your body. You show that you're able to hold it up in a fight, which is good, and you didn't break any of your bones. Next, we're going to work on finding the max output you can use before the power becomes too much. Is it nodded to the older hero? What percentage of one for all do you think you were channeling just now? Izuku hesitated. Um, maybe two or three percent. Increase it by one percent slowly, until you think it'll start being dangerous to your health. Izuku nodded and slowly started to increase how much of the quirk he was channeling. Four percent, five percent, six percent, seven percent, eight percent, and he could start to feel the strain. He could probably push it to nine or ten percent, but only for a short time. With this in mind, he relayed the information to Gran Torino. Not bad, but obviously your body still isn't used to the power. You aren't like Toshinori, who could use one for all almost instantly. Then again, he always was more brawn than brain. Don't mistake me, Toshinori's smart, but he's one of those people who's born with a body that lends itself to muscles. So what we're going to do is my patented hell regimen. You thought All Might's training to prepare your body was bad. Mine is downright insane. The older hero grinned. Izuku gulped as the hero held up what looked like metal bracelets. These high-density bracelets were designed by one of UA support students, and Toshinori was kind enough to provide me some. Each one of these adds about a quarter of your body weight. You will put one on each of your legs today. When I'm satisfied with your progress, you will add other set to your arms. A couple minutes later, the bands were strapped onto Izuku's legs, and each step took a ton of effort to make. Gran Torino grinned as Izuku struggled over to the kitchen table, where he was setting up lunch. Eat up, Brad. Can't have you passing out on me in our next spar. Izuku just nodded and began to eat the food. He did his best to ignore how Gran Torino stared at him, and did his best to ignore the thoughts in his mind that wondered what the hero was thinking. Dad worried about if he did something wrong, that worried that Gran Torino was just using this training as a means to hurt him without getting in trouble. He needed to be brave, to stop doubting the heroes and students around him so much. They were heroes and hero students. They weren't like his previous schooling. Didn't Aizawa and Yamada-sensei prove that? Finishing his food, he gave a thumbs up to the hero who simply nodded and moved back to the center of the room. Get over here. Izuku stood up and trudged. Each step was a fight against gravity thanks to the weights. It took him a minute to take the twenty or so steps to reach where Gran Torino waited. Get into a fighting stance. I'm going to clean up some holes in your fighting stance, and then we're going to work on kicks. You are not to use one for all to help you move. So he shifted into a fighting stance and soon was being whacked, with Gran Torino pointing out flaws in his stance, openings that people would take advantage of. He forced Izuka to kick, which, with the weights, caused him to lose his balance a lot, though he started to get the hang of it. But after a few correct kicks, his legs were trembling and ready to give out from the exertion. After a couple hours of sparring without quirks, the hero gave him a grocery list and told him to run to the store and back. Legs feeling like jelly, he did and got the groceries. Soon he was on his way back and was forced to cook dinner. That night, he collapsed onto the little mat and was instantly asleep. His eyes opened to see he was surrounded by what looked like darkness. Looking around, he couldn't see anything. And then he looked down at himself and found himself covered in the same darkness. A flash of lightning lit up a shadowy figure in the distance. Izuku frowned, tilting his head to the side as darkness descended again. He tried to move, but found he was completely immobile, nor could he speak. Lightning flashed again, closer this time. The same shadowy figure, showing. Another minute, and another even closer lightning, and the figure appeared to be getting closer and closer. Izuku watched with growing horror as the figure came closer and closer. One final flash, and the figure was a few feet in front of Izuku, on the edge of the darkness that surrounded him. His heart pounded like crazy, and Izuku wondered if he was about to die. Was this figure going to kill him? Why couldn't he move? Izuku wanted to run and flee, but his body refused to listen to him. All he could do was watch and wait. So he observed the figure, and he could make out no details, but he could see a strange white glow where the eyes would be, and he could make out hands moving and rubbing together. As the figure rubbed their hands, sparks seemed to generate. The shadow stopped rubbing his hands and pulled them apart. Lightning danced between his hands, creating a small electric barricade. The farther apart the figure pulled his hands, the weaker the barrier seemed to get, until it dissipated into nothing. Lightning flashed again this time across the sky instead of striking down, briefly illuminating the entire place Izuku was in. He could see other shadowy figures standing and staring at him. As the lightning dissipated, Izuku was pretty sure he managed to make out eight figures, if he included the person in front of him. The shadow in front of him stepped towards him, shadowy hands reaching out. There was a silent rumble, everything shaking, but there was no sound. 
The world started to break apart, cracks forming in the ground, revealing a bright light that seemed to pour out. But still, the place remained dark. The ground directly underneath his feet started to crack and fall apart, and Izuku fell through the ground, mouth covered, making it impossible to scream. Izuku sat up with a startled gasp, lightning flicking off his body as one for all deactivated. Did he... did he somehow activate the quirk in his sleep? What was that dream? Who were those figures? But more importantly, who was that one figure who came up to him? Glancing at the time, he saw it was close to 2 a.m., and so he laid back down. It took a while, but eventually he managed to fall back asleep. No more strange dreams plaguing him. All right, listeners, this concludes Chapter 41 of Little Acts of Kindness. Chapter 42 will be up next. Hope you all are still enjoying, and as always, thank you so much for listening.